Hi, everybody. Hello. Brandon Yeager, Deb Yeager here, Yeager Training, where we help business owners, coaches, and entrepreneurs transform self to transform others. Today, we have our fifth episode of Six Figure Networking Secrets, where we, Brandon and I, actually created six figures in less than 10 months through networking and, of course, our secrets of NLP, and we want to share it with you. So episode number five, getting over social anxiety. I love this one because I used to struggle deeply of social anxiety. Yeah, it's, a, it's actually a huge thing. A lot of people don't realize it. So there's a guy I met um, at one of our networking events that involved some social drinking, mm. right? Yeah. And uh, he had to chug back two. Cause he's like, gosh, I can't even stand this environment. And he was going back for his third. Yeah. There's a lot of people that do that. It's very common. And um, so if you're watching this, you're listening to this, you know, if you struggle with social anxiety, this is something that you're definitely going to want to overcome and break through because it's a massive block in making more money. Absolutely. And we've all been there and it's okay. And the first thing to say, if you do struggle with an, uh, in social anxiety, you are not alone. Probably most of the people in the group that are new or even the ones that have been there quite some time actually share the same feeling. So you're not alone. And then also reward yourself, give yourself a pat on the back for getting out of your own way and actually taking action, putting yourself in a, a situation that may in the beginning feel uncomfortable. The reason why I say in the beginning is because it's a skill set that you can learn through NLP and strategy to where you'll feel more and more comfortable the more you do it. Yes, very it's like, much so. It's just like anything else. It's like going to the gym. You get stronger each time you do it. If you do it with intention and you get the learnings at the end of each networking, then you will get more powerful and more comfortable each time you go. So first thing I want to talk about is strategy. We already talked about before the mindset going in. Of course, you want to set a goal. You want to get an empowered state. You definitely, if you have social anxiety, you definitely want to use your resource anchor. Going through the door, you want to stack that thing, maybe in the car, listen to the music, get all fired up, fire your resource anchor right when you go through the doorway. Yes, very much so. Yes. So getting in the state is powerful. And a lot of people, they're, mm -hmm. what gets this social anxiety started is you're focused, here's the secret. Yeah. Listen, listen, listen. You're focused specifically on what you do not want, mm -hmm. right? And so when you think about, oh my gosh, what if I stand up in front of the room and everybody laughs at me? Or we've had a client say this, is I, what if I get in front of a room and I trip over my words? Hell, we've done it. I mean, you can get in we front of the room. We did it the other day. I had marbles like, in my mouth. The words <laughs> won't come out. Like, da, <laughs> they da, won't da. come out. Yeah. And so here's the thing about that. <laughs> Whatever. It's it all right. You all trip over us. your words, you recover. It's the people that don't recover that they just, it sends them down to this spiraling downward where they're, um, they, it really makes them struggle to get back onto to track on where they were focused. Yeah, totally. So it's important to focus specifically on what you want, which means when you Set leave. Set a goal before you go. Of course. And when you leave the networking event, that everybody had an amazing um, experience when you were up in front of the of the group. We're right? going to talk about that on the later episodes about talking. He <laughs> loves to skip. It's okay. I love, my, my husband has a brilliant mind, and he's he's a, a double Libra, so he's like all over the place at the quantum level, and I'm I'm very linear. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure if that was a compliment. Right? It's wonderful because we have the perfect break between the two of us. <laughs> yes. So strategies of walking in the room. So sometimes, um, Fine, then. yes, I'm taking over. I'm taking, <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking over. Uh, so strategies, because we're going to talk about pitching. Of course. It's the whole I'm segment sorry. on pitching. I um, so strategies of walking in the room. A lot of times it's at a restaurant or maybe it's at a bar or maybe it's an event. So if you feel like the anxiety is happening, of course, fire your resource anchor or even excuse yourself to go to the bathroom. Sometimes um, in the beginning when I was doing lots of networking, I would go to the bathroom and I would do a breathing exercise and just kind of get myself together, pump myself up. I would fire my resource anchor again before I would go out in the crowd. Now, when you first get to the networking group, depending upon if you get there late, there's going to be a ton of people. But if you get there earlier, I feel like it's a little bit more comfortable because you can kind of ease yourself in. Usually, the leader of the group is there and they're available, which is a perfect opportunity for you to spark up a conversation. Now, I know that most people, not all people, but most people that struggle with social anxiety, and I'm talking about my own personal history and other people that I've worked with, a lot of times they don't want to bother anybody and they don't feel good enough or um, able or like the person wants to hear what they have to say for the leader. 
Um, I always or when you come into the group, yeah, you're, you're that person that always kind of sits in the back. Yeah, and just don't look at me. Stays They're out all of the way. introverts are like, don't look at me. Don't pick me. Don't pick me. Yeah. I always say, hey, Leah. go straight hey, up to go straight up to the person David. that is, hey, Leah, hey, Bebo, Bebo, Bebo and um, uh, Nikki. Nikki, it's good to see you. Go straight up to the person that's running the event and introduce yourself. Usually they're very friendly and they, they want to talk to you and they're very excited to see new faces. So it's a great opportunity to start building that long lasting rapport with the leader and it breaks the shell. Um, also, whenever you're networking, um, you may see people that know each other that are already having those deep conversations. Yep. So I always advise just going up and standing next to them and then say, do you mind if I, you know, join you in this conversation? I know that it, it's only uncomfortable once. Yes. Right. It's only a little bit uncomfortable when you first break into the group and say, how's it going? Yeah. How's everyone doing? Look, that's why you're there, right? You're at the networking event to put yourself out of the comfort zone, meet new people, and start to figure out who's a good fit for your business and see if someone can help you with a resource for your business. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, if some people are saying, hey, like, you know, we're having a really uh, intimate conversation, then just step away and just know that it's not personal. Also, another thing to consider is when you go through the room, scan the room and see what's going on. Like who's talking to who, who seems like they are your potential client based upon their dress. Of course you don't want to mind read of people's dress and you can kind of get a, an idea of, you know, are they a realtor? Are they in the business? Are they in the corporate? You know, you can get a better idea. Not always. By calibrating. Calibrating humans. You're not judging. Yeah. Let's, let's be clear on that. Yes. You're calibrating based on what you see, which is only through your filters, by the way. So yeah. be careful about that too. If you are highly judgmental, you probably want to be careful about, um, you know, calibrating what you see or at least being aware of it, at least identify and be aware. That's what we're saying. Yeah. Just want to be clear on that. And go and go and introduce yourself to everyone. It, as many people as possible, spark up those conversations. Bring some energy. Yes. It's, uh, it's you got to bring energy into the group. You got to bring a lot of energy to the group. And that's one thing that we've been successful at is, you know, sometimes there's events and groups we've been to. It's like, let's, let's spice this energy up. I feel like this room is flat and I think it's good to bring energy into a group. So charisma goes a long way. Absolutely. I love what David says at my age, I don't wait to join in. And it's, it's true. It's, it's we're true. all there to network and meet people. If people, if the two people that are having a conversation or three people are having the conversation that is something that they don't want you to interrupt, they'll kindly and politely say, hey, we're having a really um, intimate conversation. Would you mind if you came back in a little bit? And you just go to somebody else. Who cares? And Let all that stuff go. Something I like to do is if I'm talking to one or two people, I like to introduce the yeah. guy that's wandering or the gal that looks like Bring she, them in. she just came Bring in. Them in. Welcome them to the group. Say, hey. My name's so and so. Why don't you meet blah 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 and blah blah blah? Like introduce them. I think that's something that um, you know. If, if again, it's calibration. It's also external awareness. You know, yes, we're talking to two people here in our conversation, and knowing this person over here would love to join the group. Welcome them, right? And I think give, leave with the giving hand. So that's something that um, I see a lot of people like. Like they just, they get in a conversation, they get so focused on it, they forget who's around them. Go into peripheral so yeah. you can see everything. You can have a sense that people are wanting to come in on the conversation. And it, it makes you also known as the person that's welcoming, friendly. Exactly. Um, people will go to you, be drawn to open. you. Because you're open and you get a good feeling when you're the, around those type of people. It's really important that you want to be open and receiving and supportive to everybody in the room. And people will want to buy from you. It's, it's all about mindset and the energy that you're giving off. Yeah, totally. Comment below if you think you could uh, improve in that area or if you do it, are you open or are you closed? Or anybody <laughs> that feels uncomfortable whenever open, they're trying to get into open. a little you're circle, closed. a tight knit circle, put you know, closed. Put, put in the comments um, the times that you've actually walked away from probably a possibility because you were um, having some sort of social anxiety or not wanting to interrupt or not wanting to bother or the fear of rejection or the fear of looking stupid, any of those things. Put it in the comments because, you know, let's talk about it because these are things that we can let go of to where we can be more effective in our communication. Because yep. here's the thing. If you don't go up to people, then what the hell are you doing here? Well, you're right. really, here's the thing about um, networking events. And when you go to meet people and you go to business or groups, if you really don't give that extra effort, 
you are wasting your time. Yeah. Let's be brutally honest. You are wasting time if you do not get an outcome or a result, mm -hmm. which means you're just going for social reasons, which yeah. is fine if that's what your goal is. But again, social is different than business, right? If you got a business goal, focus on the business goal. If you got a social goal, focus on the social goal. For some, it's both. Great. Then be as outgoing as you possibly can, right? Put the extrovert hat, take it off, put it on the side, put it on the shelf, and put that extrovert hat on, or the introvert, the introvert sorry, hat. put the introvert on the side, put the extrovert hat on, and go out there and meet people. Absolutely. And make the connections with, so whenever people are going around the room, like in the beginning, there's usually open networking, and then usually there's an opportunity for people to speak. Not always. If there is that opportunity, then be taking notes mentally or on a piece of paper to where then you can go and immediately connect with them afterwards. That's another strategy that I've noticed that was really extremely effective. Let's see in the comments. Act excited to be there. Yes. There are some people do smell popcorn. <laughs> David. David, David, David. <laughs> David. Um, give people eye contact. eye contact. Yep. If you're talking in a group, don't just look at one person. Yep. Follow the group. Scan the group. Yeah. Good comments, Hannah. Yeah. Wonderful. And remember people's names. This is something that I'm working still on and that I, because in the past. Repeat the name right back. Yeah. Repeat the Hi, so I'm Brandon. nice to meet you. What's your name? Deb. 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 How you doing? Deb, I want you to meet blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So make a mental note. <laughs> Sometimes um, people remember easier if they if you could take the name and relate it to something that you already know and uh, attach that mental picture or someone else that you know with the same name and link the two, then you can remember the name easier because people appreciate that. And then the next time you see them, you can say their name again and they'll be like, oh, wow, they really cared. Well, you do care and you remember their name. Yep. Again, so back to being excited. So there was a guy that we just recently, um, when we went to a networking group, um, the guy just led with, um, hey, I'm so-and-so. You're pro I'm probably not going to remember any of your names, um, but my name's Brandon. Not a good way to get into the group, by the way. Mm -hmm. And so if you're doing that with limiting beliefs and um, stories, that's the one way to break rapport before you've even built it. Yeah. I thought it was it was was really pretty funny. I said, well, let's start trying to remember people's names by doing it now. <laughs> so that's a, a great example of someone focused on what they don't want, and then they create no, not remembering anyone's name. Probably, and that, probably wondering why it doesn't have results in networking. And if you do forget somebody's name, it's not bad if you just, it, it's okay. If you say, hey, I'm so sorry, um, your name's, you know, what was your name again? Because it slipped my mind. Yep. Um, and that's okay. As long as you do it early on in the relationship, because I used to forget people's names immediately because, again, I was all in my freaking head and I wasn't really listening. That's another topic. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because I was so introverted and had the anxiety, then I was in my head trying to think of what I was going to say to the person before they finished talking because I wanted to look like I was listening. And then by looking like I was listening, then I wasn't listening. So get out of your head. Get out of your head. Be present with the person. Be present in the group. Listen to what they're having to say. And when you're present, uh, Hannah made a good uh, a good comment of not complaining about networking or why you're networking or, oh, I have to be here because yeah. I don't have a job and I got to find a job. You know. Um, be excited while you're there. Just make up a story. Meet people. If the conversation's not going the way you want it, break rapport, move on to the next. Yeah. Break rapport, move on to the next. Build rapport, break rapport, build rapport, break rapport. So yeah. much of that needs to be done. It's 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 amazing that if you break rapport, you're actually building boundaries, by the way. Yeah. And for those of us with healthy boundaries, we'll get into that because that's a whole nother episode. <laughs> because there's going to be a lot of people there that aren't really your niche client and you're not really theirs. And so it's appropriate for you to just break rapport and just go on to the next person. It's nothing personal. You're just there to get your intention and they are too. And you're yeah. actually saving them time. And, you know, time is the one thing that we can't get more of. It's so. the one thing that we're short on yeah. all of us. I've never had anyone that said, I have a lot of money, but I have plenty of time. And most people we have, we have very rare, very few of us have a lot of time, right? We're all pressed for somebody else's schedule. So yeah, time so, is the commodity. The big thing, look them in the eye and practice and get out of your head. Eye contact is important. How do you get out of your head? You open up your ears and turn on your heart. 
Yep. This, the quickest way to get out of your head is to, I'll say it again, open up your ears and ask yourself, how can I help this? How can I help this person? And come from a place of service in your heart, a genuine, like really, really caring about this person and what they have to say. And if they aren't a good fit for you, then just go ahead and go to the next person. Happy, very poor. healthy, wealthy energy. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to say something to that. Let's not wear our need on our sleeve. Yes. A lot of us have this need. I got to make some money. <laughs> I need to make a sale. I haven't made a sale in two weeks. But you can't, you can't wear that. You got you, you to gotta knock that off. Yeah. I, we get you're there for needs. We all are. And let's not lead with the need, right? Leave the sleeve off the need. Need off the sleeve. <laughs> and know that if you do, so I have social anxiety, I said this again, I'll say it again, is that every time, at, tell yourself the mantra, every time that I do this, I'm getting stronger, I'm getting better, I'm getting more effective, I'm becoming more confident. Um, and one of the things that I did to actually do that is the strategy of act after the networking event, then I would journal about my learnings of just the communication. What was the learning of me walking through the room? What was the learning of the first conversation that I had? What could I do differently looking back at the event and having the conversations? Where was those um, gifts of opportunity of growth? And by writing those down, you will grow each time that you go networking. It's very, very powerful. And I had a great question. What are some things you can do if you're not sure what to ask? Ask for how to start the conversation. What do you say? How do you break the ice? How do you start the conversation? If she said there's a lot of people that struggle with this. Instead of, what do you do for a living? <laughs> or what is it that you do? I know that's a you very say, what are you, thing. Um, where are you most excited about right now in your life? Yeah. You could say, you know, um, you know, what are you passionate about? You know, have conversations as if you were having a conversation with a, a friend or somebody that you're going to become a really close friend with. Big picture, but below the weather. Yeah. Right? Like, what's your favorite part about Austin? Or what's yeah. your favorite thing to do in Austin? Yeah. You know, or how long have you been in Austin? So many people start with the business, like build rapport and then work into the business. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And so next episode, we're going to talk more about strategies of how can, um, to connect with the leader and then what to say when you actually are in these conversations to be able to start doing what we already taught in the later, um, the five step sales process, selling to serve, how you start that process once you start building rapport. So one way, um, when you're focused on social anxiety and you get it and you're surprised, that's, that's, we've got to check our focus. But the one thing we like to do when we're networking is become totally aware. Mm -hmm. Awareness, can we cannot stress enough. A lot of people may say, well, these are really easy, basic, common sense things when we're networking, but here's the thing. We forget when we're in the moment. There's so many people that are aware of this now on this call or on this video chat, and when they get out their network, they get so focused in their head, like Deb said, they get in their head, and then they start focusing on the sales or the need or, oh, God, I, I got to get something done or I got to meet some people, and they get over anxious, which creates anxiety. And, um, and then it looks like that desperate energy that's coming out, right? It feels like they've got commission breath, um, or all these other things. And so to really, what we like to do is when we go into peripheral, like we want to maintain this awareness, this state. I like to think when I walk in the room, I'm like, how can I be the most self-aware person? And like, am I self-aware of everything that could possibly be going on with myself? Not to the point where I'm in my own head and judging myself, but be aware of everything going on, right? Notice when someone's over there talking to, you know, by themselves. Notice when there's a large group growing and you wanna introduce some people to other people, like really be aware. I, I can't stress that enough. I think social anxiety comes down to foveal thinking and just focus on, oh my gosh, um, look what I'm about to do or what, look what I'm not doing correctly. And we, ne we wanna reverse that thinking into awareness, which is expansion not focused on one negative thing. It's focused on all things and just calibrating, right? We're just aware of external behavior. Yeah. And make it a game. Um, the best, one of the best advice I can give you is treat this as like you are in a video game and you are the avatar. And every single time that you, um, 
you know, have a conversation that you're literally taking that feedback from the conversation, how you communicated, you know, how did that person respond? You know, were you able to, if you play it, if you play it as a game, like going to networking events and seeing like if this pitch landed or this um, type of five step sales process and how you were building rapport with this person, how that came out and how did you get the feedback and the result for it? If you play it as a game and um, a not game. personal, uh, just a human being experience, and an experiment where you're going out there and making mistakes and there really is no mistake because no everything mistakes. everything is right and by the way it's fun to kind of mess up you know when you go through that experience of let's say you broke rapport great you learn what you learn what not to say yeah. right big deal if the person holds it personally against you then that you're actually triggering something inside of them that they can grow and evolve as a human being so know that there's nothing wrong that you could ever say there's nothing wrong that you could ever do leah said let's make it a game exactly make it a game exactly Leah. yeah if you go in the mindset of having it be a game and every time you get this amazing feedback incorporate the feedback you're going to get stronger and stronger Thank you, Sean. We love y'all too. It does our heart well to give you these sessions and keep your motor running. Yeah. So keep watching and tuning in. We appreciate so that. We will be talking about some fun topics on Friday, building rapport, how to get in rapport with the leader and what to ask um, to then plant the seed for your ask and um, how to start having those really powerful conversations to then later take them into the five step sales process. Absolutely. So thank you all for joining us. Um, share this with a friend if you feel like it's useful. Also, uh, please subscribe to our YouTube tra channel. It's a Jaeger Training YouTube channel. That's where you can find all of our videos in one place. Um, we're really wanting to build up our following. We have an amazing event around the corner. Yes. It's coming up. It's we the have three day business training, left. applying NLP to business. We love this training because we feel like we can give the most value in a short period of time for someone that is struggling with sales, struggling with their focus. Maybe they're frustrated with the kind of clients they're attracting and their bank account is crying. <laughs> okay. If your bank account's me, crying, me, yeah, me. it's a great training <laughs> and it, it it's a massive amount of value. $1,295 training. We are doing a heck of an offer. It's normally $395 for early bird special. It's $195 this week, this week only. And I'm offering a guarantee that if you're willing to follow and take all the learnings and all the wisdom that we offer in that training, following the five sub sales model, you will make more money. You will make sales. If you on average are not making very many sales on a monthly basis, I can guarantee you'll make five sales coming out of that training within 30 days. And I can guarantee that, or I'll give you your money back. If you followed our process, I can assure you, and if you still aren't satisfied with that offer, I'll give you $100, right? I'll give you $100 back after I've already refunded your money. That's how confident I am in this training. And that's how confident we are to help people who really want to seek personal growth and development and become a better salesperson. So because besides becoming a better salesperson, you'll be a better networker. So take us up on that offer if you're interested. JaegerTraining.com. Check out the three-day business page. Thank you. Thanks. See ya.